Okay, we are going to get started here. Thank you everyone for joining us on today's webinar. Uh, today's topic will be learning the framework to day trader Josh's swing trading system. I just have to read our standard disclosures here before we get going and then I'll hand it over to Josh to begin. So just, uh, you know, take notice of these disclosures because they are very important. Please keep in mind this presentation is for informational purposes only. Nothing presented today should be construed as investment advice or recommendation to buy, sell, or hold any specific securities. Since we do not know everyone's investment objectives or risk tolerance, we are not endorsing any specific trading strategies. We also encourage you to ask questions as we go through the presentation. You can do that by typing them right into the webinar box as we go. Uh, we will try to answer them as we go along or definitely get to them by the end of the presentation. This presentation will be recorded and uploaded to our online webinar library. You'll be able to see this one along with other past webinars on our archive at uh, lightspeed.com slash webinar. If any point during the presentation you miss something, you want to go back to reference it at a future date, you could always visit our website where it will be stored. Please feel free to contact me directly at sales at lightspeed.com if you would like to have specific questions answered or by visiting our website at uh, lightspeed.com as well where you can request a demo of the trading platform at any time. Uh, all these standard day trading disclosures are on our website so uh, feel free to go over these and make sure you're aware of all the disclosures before uh, you initiate trading. Okay, so uh, now I want to introduce Josh DiPietro, the best-selling author, and we will uh, get going here. So I'm just going to switch over him to the presenter, and we'll get going. So uh, just give us one sec here. Hello, Rob. You can hear me, right? Yes. Okay, great. Sounds I'm good. Get my, wonderful. I'll get my screen up here, and am I ready to go as soon as the screen's up? Yep, I see the screen, and I hear you good, so I think we're ready to go. Let's try this. All right, give me two seconds here, folks. All right, I'm all set, and thank you for that great introduction, Rob. I'm going to get started right now. First, uh, I do want to point out that as far as question and answer and go, I would like to save them for the end. I typically do that. I'll run through everything and then at the end answer them because it's kind of hard for me to stop midway, uh, answer questions uh, versus just wait until the end. So everyone obviously take some notes. Uh, for the most part, the, the questions you have will be right off slides and I can always go back to them. So with that said, I'll get started. Today, as it suggests here, it's definitely the framework that I'll be showing you, just like in my previous uh, webinar that is on my website. That one focuses primarily on the intraday trading attribute of my overall strategy. There are two strategies that uh, work together, and I'll certainly cover that later on in the webinar. Today, main purpose is to, to separate the two, because the best way to learn intraday versus swing is they have to be separated. So with that said, I'll move on here, and give me one second, there we go, now that it's working. Before I get going, I, I always do this in all webinars, I usually spend the first five, ten minutes uh, going over how much you know about my trading methodology uh, and how much I know about you, whether it's a webinar or a seminar. Uh, of course, it helps to know how much you know about me, that way I can tailor what I'll be going over in this webinar or seminar. Since I don't know exactly who's listening in right now, I'll just briefly go through this. First and foremost, yes, as Rob suggested, I am the author of The Truth About Day Trading Stocks. And the one thing I definitely got to point out, particularly since it's going on almost five years since the book was published, or at least written, uh, several things have changed, obviously. With any real day trading strategy, you got to go with the markets. You got to constantly readjust uh, several factors that I will cover, um, a lot of them today. Obviously, there's so much I can't cover in one hour, and this is a one-hour webinar. Uh, for the most part, the biggest change that I want to add is the fact that I more am a swing trader now, mainly because 
you graduate to that yourself. When I first wrote the book, I was primarily intraday trading for the simple fact that you don't hold overnight, hence intraday trading, because it's too much risk. Uh, not to mention uh, several factors I won't get into, but as far as the book goes, the main theme, as the subtitle suggests, cautionary tale, is whether you're starting out now or five years ago, you need to stick to a high risk, low exposure environment when you start off with any system. That whether you're a professional of uh, day trading, uh, the point is if you learn any new strategy, you should start with low exposure. For instance, 100 share block trades. That's the main theme of my book, a main theme of my training program. I'll start you off with only 100 share blocks. You can work up from there. Doesn't matter whether you have the minimum of $25,000 for pattern day trader status or you're well into the seven digits. You should always start off when you're training with 100 shares. Uh, also, the book primarily focuses on intraday trading because at the time I wasn't necessarily swing trading, uh, which again we're going to get into today. I'll give you the framework, but essentially swing trading is you're trading much stronger levels and you're holding for more profits and most importantly you're holding overnight in many cases, which brings in the risk back. So yeah, there's been several changes in the book. I could show you a list of a hundred things that have changed. Obviously, those are the biggest, uh, and we'll go on from there. Now. A couple other things. Uh, this is where it helps me. If I, if this was a real live seminar, I could actually question everyone who's read any of my feature articles in Stocks and Commodities magazine, or I regularly write for. Usually, every few months, I, I uh, get a feature article. The most recent ones I will cover today because they're they have a lot to do with my new swings trading strategy. So, if you read any of those articles, you kind of already were a lot of the stuff I'm going to be covering today. You will already know. Uh, I will, although, be showing some live setups, uh, showing you access to my trade room towards the end of the webinar here so I can give you examples of how the swing trading uh, strategy works, uh, again, as a framework. Uh, again, if you've seen any of my previous webinars, so I, again, on my website, Intraday Trading, as well as I've done pretty much the same webinar on Intraday Trading on several other websites, including the themoneyshow.com. So if you've seen that, you've got their overview of intraday, which helps. So the point is, if you have any previous knowledge of my trading methodology, a lot of what I'm going to show you right now, you already know, but you'll be able to grasp it quicker. Unfortunately, anyone who's tuned in right now for the first time, uh, to, from my experience, I throw a lot at you, and it goes way over most people's heads. I do my best to make it seem simple, but as you know, any real day trading system is not simple. And even my system, I'm just showing you the framework today. As far as graduates in my training program, uh, there's a few tuned in today I know personally. Uh, and uh, they, of course, already know the strategy. Uh, so they're more likely wait until I get to the end to see what happened today with IBM, for instance, and Ralph Lauren. These are stocks I trade. I'm sure they can't wait to see uh, what happened with that and what they should have or could have done. As far as my website goes, again, daytraderjosh.com. If you've been on there, if you actually spend time, whether you're drinking wine or a beer or just kicking back for an hour, you, there's plenty of resources on there that generally will give you all the, all the information I'm giving you right now. Plus, this webinar will be posted on my website, hopefully within the next week. Now, one of the articles I wrote almost a year ago, October 2013 issue, uh, it's called Intraday and Swing Trading. It focuses on the fact that they are not, keyword not, mutually exclusive. And I will do my best in this short webinar to explain why they are not. And I will show you in a setup that actually happened today, again on IBM, where both came together for a perfect, I, I like to call precision reversal. And with my system, it's all about counter trend reversal. And I will cover that shortly for those of you first uh, tuning in and not knowing my system. The point is, uh, you need to understand that intraday always comes first. You must learn intraday first. I could give you a hundred reasons why, but first and foremost, because it's less risk. As far as you don't hold overnight, you're not holding positions as long. They're usually uh, a max cap on your positions. In my case, I cap it at 300 shares. And more importantly than anything, your intraday levels are constantly changing. Therefore, any swing setup that you may have had yesterday or thought you had could change today. I'll get more in depth with that later. 
The point is they are not mutually exclusive. You can't swing trade not knowing what's happening intraday. Converse, you can't possibly do an intraday trade and have no clue where your swing pivot points are. You could be as much as $20 off your mark in some cases. I'll give examples of that. So now about you, this is where I can't ask uh, everyone that's out there tuning in right now, but in general I'd like to know what your expertise levels are. You know, are you a novice? Have you been trading for a few trades? Uh, of course, are you equities, forex, futures, options, commodities, all that's listed here? I'm primarily equities. Everyone knows that. Uh, that's read any of my articles and, of course, any of my graduates in my program. And more importantly, how were you trained? Who trained you? What system are you using? How consistent is it for you? How's it working out for you? All these things definitely come into play. Uh, you know, I could go on and on asking questions. This is where I usually interact with the crowd, getting a lot of feedback from everyone. But in general, I'm going to just assume, particularly since a lot of uh, t people tuning in are with Lightspeed, a lot of you are at the very least novice traders that are not, maybe not trading full time, but you've got an in-depth knowledge of the markets, and you certainly know uh, virtually every chart I'm going to show you, such as a one-minute chart, such as a daily chart, a level two quote charts. You know, these are all basic things that we all understand, and that helps. Now, of course, the topic today, the framework to my swing trading system. So this is where I normally would ask questions just moving forward, but uh, this is where I definitely start writing down questions, and I will get back to them at the end. This is my, I don't want to exactly call it a disclosure page, but this is my reminder page. I call it my reminder and cautionary page. The key word entire. Day Trader Josh's entire trading methodology. It is impossible for my system to be explained in these slides and with my voice in just one hour, enough to where you can go and try and apply it to the market. So please do not. You need to be formally trained on this. There are so, so much more to this system than just looking at a few charts, and I'm going to give you a lot of information in just these slides. That almost seemed too easy. So... The only way I give the framework is really give the meat, the meat of the methodology, I like to phrase it. But that is not enough. There's so much more to it. So just please, anyone who's first tuning in and knows nothing about me, you're going to learn some really cool setups and some, you know, methodologies here. Just don't try to apply them without being formally trained on this. It is a very in-depth system. I like to start off with the most simple part of my system is the stock picking. Usually that's 99% of all equities trading is which stock do we trade. I break it down to where, and again, this is very basic. There's a lot more to it than just this. But in general, the most basic is I trade stocks between $100 and $250. The main reason why stocks over $100, and again, there's a long list, but the main reason is they're the most volatile. They have the most liquidity. Most importantly, those, these are the ones that the big boys on Wall Street are trading. And they have the most consistency on pullbacks when they hit certain key support resistance levels. Again, because they're high liquidity and, and traded, on the most part, on high-frequency trading systems. Uh, so and it, it, I could go on and on and on. But in general, they are very reactive to the market. And we want that with my system. The reason why I max it at 250, that's really my rule. Obviously, stocks like Google and Apple or uh, Wall Street's trading them, I'm just not. Because quite, they're just too expensive. That's the main reason. It takes up too much of your capital. You'll find with my system, you the more capital you have, the more options you have. So you don't want to limit your options by getting too uh, highly capitalized on one position. So I cap it at 25 and coincidentally 20, $250 happens to be the $25,000 max for a 100 share position. I trade the same stocks every day. You'll find that my trading room I have, uh, currently there are seven stocks in there and they are all the same stocks. Some of them I've been trading for over four years. Uh, not just every day. It's the same stocks every day. That's the two key main factors. Stocks that are traded by Wall Street, high volatility, high liquidity, and you trade them the same day, so every day. Now, swing trading, this is where I'm going to get into breaking down what you haven't seen before. Uh, but before I get into that, the next slide, I'm kind of jumping ahead, but the next slide is going to be a breakdown of intraday. 
But I just want to point out here again that they're not mutually exclusive, your intraday strategy and swing trade. And you must learn intraday before swing. Again, the main reason being is because it is less risk. But there's a lot more to it than just risk because I get a lot of professional traders that come to me and they're so confident that they got the intraday trading down, but it's not about that. It's because my specific system has so many parameters, rules, and more important than anything, procedure-based. It is a price-based system. Uh, we'll, I'll, I'll, I'll explain that uh, in a moment. But for the most part, yeah, swing trading is more risk, more reward. You'll understand more reward in a moment when I tell you the difference. Again, for those of you that haven't no clue about my system. We're going to first rem I'll remind for those intraday, the general framework notice says intraday trade. This isn't the swing trading. Uh, but for the most part, it's counter trend reversal trading. I know that's a tongue twister, but counter trend reversal trading simply on the surface means the first bullet point, which means I'm waiting for, I'm, I'm basically on the sidelines, not trying to predict how far a trend will continue. I'm doing just the opposite. I'm waiting until it stops dropping, hits certain uh, support levels, then I get in at certain key points going long after it's dropped on several levels. And that's where it gets very, very involved, obviously. There's tons of support levels throughout the day for intraday. And again, this is for swing trades, so I don't want to get into it. But in general, I'm going long after it breaks a support, and after it shoots up, breaks through a resistance, I start short. Of course, that sounds like buy low, sell high strategy on the surface. But uh, with the, the, the key theme here is I'm on the sidelines while a major run's happening. I come in after it, it exhausts itself, breaks through key support and resistance levels that my system shows you to pick. And even then, there are several resistance levels, several support levels. Which ones do you pick? I do my best even in my six-week program to explain that. Here, it's impossible. All you need to know for now is the basic framework to it. You probably already read ahead here. The, uh, how far past on intraday, you usually go 25 to 50 cents, depending on several, several factors. It's always a 100 share blocks I typically start off with. And again, that's mainly for people first learning it. Myself, uh, I don't get into how much I could personally uh, trade per share block. It all depends. It's, it really boils down to how much experience you have and how much capital you have. But in general, you want to cap it at three levels. That's why three times 100 is 300 shares, it says here. I'm going to get my pointer out for the first time. I'm not sure if it's in real time, but if it is, great. You can see where I'm pointing. Uh, when I'm training you in my program and anybody who starts off, you start off with 100 shares consistently for every level. So if you accumulate up to three levels, then you're going to have a 300 uh, share position. And, and again, levels I mean by tiers. That's why it says three tier. The biggest difference here is this 15 cents. That's really what everyone wants. To, everyone wants to talk turkey. How much do you make on a position? Well, it's 15 cents. Obviously, you need to have a paper share structure like Lightspeed. Uh, depending on how much you pay, that's all up to you and them. But in general, you don't want to be paying more than $1 per 100 share block trade. So you need to be paying less than that in order to profit off this, obviously. In other words, if you got 100 shares and it moves 15 cents, you made $15. So you'll probably net around $13 per trade. And obviously, for intraday, it doesn't sound like a lot, but that adds up after you've got 10, 20 of these round trip trades. Now, and that's why it says 5 or 10 here. But in general, I just want to point out that's the intraday, and I have a whole other webinar with Lightspeed on my website that uh, breaks down the whole intraday strategy. For here, I just wanted to recap, that's intraday. Next slide is the swing trading. There's some key differences, differences here, and they're all bolded here in green. Of course, 10 days and this whole 5% rule thing, a lot of people scratch their head on that when they know my intraday but don't know the swing. In general, they're identical systems. It's just a matter of key point entries. The, the levels you're entering at are going to be a lot stronger. They're all taken from the daily chart, which I'll be showing you that shortly, how that works. Daily chart meaning candlestick chart. Every candlestick is a day. Everything's the same. Now, with my intraday, I didn't have time to show it to you, nor could I, but on intraday, for instance, it's only a five-minute, five one minute candlesticks to hold in order to determine if it's a support or resistance. Doesn't mean you trade it, just means that is a resistance you have to consider with my system. 
with swing trading, it's 10-day hold. So notice how it jumps from 5-minute hold to a 10-day hold. Huge difference, meaning these levels are extremely strong. And when I get into my swing room and my daily uh, data room, I'll show you there's levels that have been there for months, and they hit today, and, it, and, they, and the market reacted to them like clockwork. Uh, and there's no guesswork, there's no reverse engineering in this system to where it makes it look like it works. These levels have been sitting there for months, and when they hit, the market reacts to them. It's that simple, and proof's in the pudding. That's the way I like to phrase it. So, yeah, and then this, this within 5%, I'll be showing you that as well. I'm just running through it real quick here. In other words, if you have, say, five support levels, they all have to be within 5% of each other. Meaning if, they're, if you're... You get in on a first level and it runs against you. At most, it'll run 5% against you because you had four other levels behind it, all within 5%. I know verbally it doesn't make much sense. I'll do my best to show you in the trade room how that works. And again, this is just the framework, so don't try to understand everything I'm saying. I'm talking fast. I'm going through this as quick as I can because the only way I can give you even the framework in one hour is to breeze through the framework. And the framework alone is very involved. The amount of shares that I trade, well, that depends on how much capital you have. Depends on how much experience you have. And I've mentioned before, just because you have a million dollars doesn't mean you're going to go 5,000 shares on a position. Uh, just because you, you know, just be, and maybe you converse, you don't have much, you know, you have less capital, but you can still get in on stronger levels. I'll explain that, too, once we get in the swing room. But for now, verbally, I'll just say, to give you an example, if you have five support levels, and you are willing to accumulate all five support levels on the way down, because when they're going down, remember, I go long, so it hits the supports. That's 500 shares you can accumulate. But what if you can't afford 500 shares? Well, then you wait for the fifth level to hit, for instance. And then that means that my first entry is going to go against me. By the time you get in on your fifth, I'm already well into the red. Of course, I make more because I have 500 shares. You only had 100. But that's one of the main reasons why I didn't note it here. But I have a, a more recent Stocks and Commodities feature article in May, the chat rooms it's called. That describes exactly kind of what I'm talking about. It's a great read. It basically explains on how a, a trade room, just because I'm getting in at a certain level, does not mean you should be trading that level. It doesn't mean you should be trading that many shares. I mean, any trading room that shows you a certain level is where you get in without knowing a clue about who you are, how much experience you have, how much capital you have, keyword capital, that, that, that should be criminal in my opinion. That's why you have to kind of make those decisions on your own because you are your own investment manager. No one can tell you get in at a certain level. All I can do is show you these levels. So where well, there's a little bit more here continued. This uh, basically breaks down your profit uh, profit and how we take them. Uh, of course, this is what everyone likes to see, is the fact that you're going to make $2 profit in general. Again, my stocks are $100 to $250, so I, anything from $100 to $150, I'll only take a $1.50 profit. Most of my stocks right now in the trade room are all over $150, so virtually every trade swing I get in, it's going to be a $2 run. So for every 100 shares you have, that's a $200 profit. If you have 1,000 shares, then you're going to make 2,000 and so on. The sky's really the limit with swing trade. Uh, that's where I basically I'll mention that now. But again, you need to know the entire system for it to really work for you. That goes for any system, folks. You know, this is a profession. It goes without saying, but I have to say it. Just like my book, the title, The Truth About Day Trading Stocks, I have to say it. Uh, because most people, they'll come in, they'll learn a little strategy and they'll go apply it with real money. I mean, I, and I used to be that guy years ago, believe me. But uh, you have to know the entire trading methodology. You have to get formally trained on this, like any profession, for it to really make sense and work out for you. And that takes time, lots of time. In my case, six weeks in my training program. All right, well, here we go. We've got uh, pretty much halfway through, or a good 35 minutes left, so and that's perfect timing. What I'm going to do is... First, start off with pulling up my trading rooms. And I say rooms because they're not necessarily trading rooms. One is a data room, and one does show the swing levels. So I have to kind of educate you a little bit on the rooms themselves. Uh, one reason why I don't just ask, no one can just access my rooms. They'll make absolutely no sense to you unless you knew my trading methodology. That's why. They're just a bunch of numbers, and that's it. And you would have no clue what to do with those numbers. 
So give me one second here. I'm going to have to back out of here. And let's start with what I call here my daily chart levels room. What this means is this particular room has, and let me see, let me scroll down here slowly. Give me a second. Let's see, I'm going to have to put this out of my way. Apologize for that. I got something in my way you guys can't see. All right. Basically, like I said, I've got seven stocks in my room. Each one of these blocks you see here, I, they're all stocks. For instance, uh, Baidu, Ralph Lauren. Uh, I've got the earnings there. We're, we're past earnings season, mind you, uh, which is a great time to, to trade, uh, but it's also the most complex time to trade. Uh, this is a good time for look for this webinar. I can tell you that because everything is more straightforward. It's not as complex. With that said, um, during earnings season, that is certain. That happens four times a year, mind you. Those are the most complex periods out of the year. And if you don't know what you're doing, you get slapped so hard on one earnings season, you're still filling it to the next one. That's what my system shows you. I have so many safeguards in place to where you don't get burnt, so to speak, on earnings. Anywho. Uh, I got Baidu in here, Ralph Lauren, that's actually a, a, one of the ones I'm going to show you an example of. Just real quick, I just want you to note the basics here. You'll note that there's dates here. These are actual levels and price levels. The left column is the highs, resistance. The right column is the lows, the supports. These are dates that correspond with actual levels that hit on the daily chart. Again, this is what I can't possibly show you in this webinar, but uh, these levels, uh, again, mainly because of uh, there's a 10-day hold, remember, for swing trading. I'll soon get to that. But these are daily levels, which means they only had to hold for five days. doesn't mean that they're actually ready to swing. That's the most hardest part of this system. To, uh, it, of course, after six weeks and you train, you, you totally get it. But in one webinar, that's where everyone just starts scratching their heads. These are just numbers, everyone. But if you check the dates on these numbers, you can write them down. You can go back test them. Even then, it won't make much sense. But you will find, though, that these levels did hold for five days on the left and right side. Excuse me, four days on the left and right side. Basically, nine-day hold. So that's why they're in here. The reason why they're green is because they held for 10 days after they formed, meaning that they're, set, they're, they're now ready to swing trade. Uh, for instance, if Baidu shoots up here and hits 222.13, this would be the first tier. I call it first tier, meaning first resistance. And you have a second resistance. And note that they're within 5% of each other. I'm just using Baidu as an example here. And again, this does not mean when it hits 222.13, folks, if you don't know my system, don't just go in and start shorting or going long, whatever you do. This, you have to understand how the whole system works. So what I'm going to do is point out Ralph Lauren. Notice the colors. The yellow means I'm in it. Or I should say that it has already hit first tier, 165, second tier, 169, and then the third tier, which is outside of 5%, you'll note that 165 to 177 is well over 5%. That's why it's grayed out. I put stars here. I'll get into that shortly. Why? And then over to the right, they're all green because it's heading up, not down. Uh, but if it were to shoot down, sure, I would, I would wait all the way for 159 before I would consider a long on this. So, and that's another right there. I usually get questions is, you know, why wait so long and things like that. It's not about time periods. It's about price levels. So, yeah, but you will note that, sure, if I'm in a position right now at 169.41, mind you, when a dollar passed it, that's, that's one of the other, I didn't point that out, but I need the swings, you go $1 past. So my entry, and I'll show it to you when we get into the swing room, was one seventy forty one, one dollars $1 past one sixty nine forty one. Now note that when it comes back down, that's a full, well over $10 run before I even consider going long again. Because one fifty nine right here is well over $10 off. So that, that just points out that the swing levels are very big moves here. And I'm on the sidelines waiting until they hit. Again, the keyword is waiting. No predicting. Now, IBM, uh, this is the one that I'm in and out. And this is one of the examples I'm going to show you today that where it not only hit a swing level of 193.03, mind you, when a dollar passed it, 
19403. That's the system. And note the date here. This has been here for quite some time. I've been waiting for it. And it just happened to hit today. So there's no reverse engineering this to make the system look right. Not only did it hit the swing, it also played into intraday level. So you could actually intraday trade into a swing and make more money. I'll explain that shortly. That usually, uh, again, is where everyone scratches their head. They have no clue about the system. But that's the point is that's where intraday and swing come together. And that's pretty much it. Uh, the other stocks, if everyone wants to know, I've got Goldman Sachs, LinkedIn, Panera, and FedEx. FedEx is one of my newer ones. I'm currently not doing any long positions, only shorts on it, even if it's heading up here. And I've already had a couple of good trades on that. So let me back out here. I want to keep it, though, on, on IBM. Note that I just scrolled down to IBM here. IBM and these levels, because I'm going to have to go off screen on that so you see these levels. Hopefully you all caught that. In other words, these levels heading up are all resistance levels. On the right column heading down are all support levels. With that said, I will now go into the swing room. And real quickly, uh, there, again, for time's sake, I've got to kind of breeze through the whole uh, I'll break it down. Basically, I have past trades in here. I only show the most current, particularly the most complicated trades, right up top here, past trades, uh, mainly for learning purposes. Everyone in my training program and everyone subscribed to it, graduates, they always like to refer back to this. And I promise you the IBM trade I'm going to show you right now will be up here. In other words, I'm going to replace this IBM trade right here with the new one that hit today. Uh, there's no reason to keep every single trade in here. It makes absolutely no sense. Why? Because the most important part is where I'm going to scroll down, which is the current section. What's most important is what's happening now. Current, and more importantly than current, is future. And this is really the meat of the swing run. Right here where it says current swing trades, there's three phases to them. Again, for time's sake, I'm going to do this the best I can, and this is my first time ever doing this, and I'm doing it live, folks, so bear with me. Uh, normally, I have a full hour one-on-one -on -one with trainees in my program. I spend a whole hour just on what I'm telling you, one-on-one, -on -one doing question and answer, and plus they've already had access to it, and they know a lot. So I'm going to just brief. Again, it's all brief. So with that said, there's three phases. Phase one, remember the 10-day hold? It says right here, it held more than 10 days. That's why all these levels here are ready to trade. And again, yellow means I'm in it. So I'm in a Ralph Lauren right now. I'm in a Goldman Sachs. The trades that are over with, typically within a day or two, and today IBM is in and out today, literally got in and out this morning, or I should say this afternoon. And LinkedIn, uh, uh, it's fairly new, a couple days here. And that's why they're grayed out. And I kind of left them in here just for this webinar. Typically, I just delete them out. Why? Because, again, it's all about what's happening now and in the future. I don't keep a log of every single setup because that would just overflow my entire room. That's the reason why. Anyone who knows my system that has subscribed to it, all my graduates, of course, they, all, they know how to go back and back test levels, for instance, and see what did happen. And that's the key. That's why you don't have to show proof of anything. All you have to do is look at the chart, go back, back test all the levels, and, and ask yourself, did it pull back? So anyways, uh, moving forward here, the center section here, and also says less than 10 days. Don't show the levels here, because this is the area where you're looking on the chart, the daily chart, and asking yourself, has the level retested yet for 10 days? That is actually one of the hardest parts about the system. That's the part I can't possibly show you, uh, never mind, in one webinar. It usually takes six weeks of training. Uh, that's because that's constantly where people make the mistake of where they didn't realize, for instance, that a level didn't hold for 10 days. And not only that, the level they, they were watching wasn't even the right level. I could go on and on and on with how many mistakes you'll make. And you will make tons of mistakes with this system. Again, that's why I have a six-week program, because that's what you have all the time to make mistakes. And you're not trading live during a six-week program. You trade live after you've learned the system. It only makes sense. Why would you start trading a system with real money when you haven't even learned it yet? Believe me, there's a lot of people out there that do it, and I hope anyone watching this webinar, again, is not going to go and try any of the methods I'm showing you because, again, there's not methods. They're just little pieces of an overall system. So uh, the right column here, as it says, within $3. Anything in here that's yellow means I'm currently in it. Anything that is not 
uh, there's none here currently, but if there's any levels that are ready to hit, for instance, uh, this would be a good time to pull up a chart for you. But just to give you an example, let's use let's use Baidu because Baidu's not over here. Suppose Baidu it says the short of 222. Remember that number? Let me go back for you. The 222 number that is in the swing room. It's right here. Same number. We're waiting for that number to hit. Now. For those of you that don't have your charts up, I'll pull it up for you. You go to Baidu. You need two seconds here. Go to Baidu. You know, we're at 215. So we're waiting for it to come all the way up to at least 222, 13, which is this level right here. If you can see this, and break it. Now, this is where this would be a good time for me to show you the 10 day rule. And this is one aspect of it. Mind you, what I'm about ready to show you is only one aspect. There's a lot more to the 10 day rule than what I'm ready to show you. Believe you me. But check this out. Let's count back. Has it even held for 10 days? Today is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. It just so happens today is the 10th day it held which means that's why it's in the swing room. It's highlighted green, and everyone who's in my program and graduates who, who subscribe to my room know very well that today, if it shot up and hit 222, that would be a first tier. It, has, it did not, though. It didn't really go anywhere. But what if it did shoot up $7? Point is, I wouldn't even consider shorting this unless, until it at least came up that high. That's the key point I just want you to walk away with here. There's no guessing should, should you start shorting. You know, wait for the level to hit. And even if it does hit, let me go back here, folks. Even if it does hit 222.13, that doesn't mean you should be shorting it. I do have to say that twice. That does not mean you should be shorting at that level. Why? Because it's the most risky level. It's a first tier. The second tier is 229. It simply means the first resistance, second resistance. And guess what? There's nothing above it because that's the all-time highs, or at least all-time highs that haven't formed yet. And they're within 5%, mind you. So you only have two tiers here. So, And this is where a lot of training comes involved. And it really boils down to you making the decision for yourself. Are you prepared to get in on the first level knowing that you're risking it running $7 against you to grab your second? Of course, if it does that and you grab the second because obviously you have enough capital to do so, well, then you'll have 200 shares and make twice as much when it pulls back. Now, Keep in mind, too, that uh, the whole 5%, again, starts with the first tier. So within 5% is roughly $11 here. And that's why it could potentially go up to 231 There just was nothing higher than that. Now, I don't want to spend too much time on Baidu because we still have to go through two really good setup examples that are currently in the Ralph Lauren. And again, I'm going to scroll back down to get to the idea. This is IBM again. Now, 193.03. I'm going to... I'm going to point out to you that 19303, you can write this down if you want, or you should, I should say. And then what I'm going to do is go to the one minute candlestick chart of today on IBM. And before we do anything, I got to remind you that we're intraday traders here that happen to swing trade. That's one way of looking at it. You can't just be a swing trader and not give two hoots about what's going on intraday. So with that said, uh, without going into too much with intraday, let me just give you the numbers. For those of you who already know the system or have a framework, especially my graduates or anyone who's watched my first webinar on intraday, you know what I'm about ready to do over here in pre-market. This is pre-market in here, the shaded area from 8 a.m to 929 candlestick, 930 is the opening. During this period this morning, the high was 193.10. Even though it's a little dot, that is a high. That is the highest price that hit. That's all you need to know for now. Don't overthink it for now. All you need to know is the high was 193.10. That is a very strong intraday level with my intraday system. It also coincides with the swing. Why? Because do I have to remind you, that the swing was 193.03 that you have written down plus one dollar. That's your that's your entry. So you're looking at short at 194.03. That's the swing, but it hits the intraday before that. 
And now let me insert a couple key, key uh, just again, framework, but they are rules. And again, there's hundreds of rules I have. And I'm just throwing some of the big ones at you. You don't start intraday trading until you're within at least $3 of your swing. I'll repeat that. And that's where swing and intraday fuse together perfectly. In other words, you shouldn't even be considering intraday trading this, you know, last week because it was more than $3 off, $193. So as soon as it hit above $190, this was an all-go to start shorting off of intraday levels. Today, it was within, it opened up almost at the swing level. But you had this wonderful level right off pre-market of 193.10, which means with my system, you go 50 cents past it. So you're going to have an entry of 193.10 plus 50. So your first entry was 193.60, which would have been in this huge green arrow going up. It just so happens it would have been right at the top of it, coincidentally. Uh, actually, the next candlestick, uh, 9932. And this will be in the swing room. I'll show you this. It's all documented there. Point is, you, your first entry was right there. It didn't pull back. It kept going against you. And again, folks, this is counter trend reversal trading. Going against me, and as crazy as it sounds, in most cases, I'm looking forward to it going against me because um, I need to capture my levels. When it's going against you, meaning in the red, that's totally normal. So long as you have a plan, so long as you know your levels, so long as you have a plan. And the plan today was... I'm going to enter off a of first tier. Notice I said first tier. If you're not capable or you know you should not be trading the first tier, and I know there's a few of my graduates out there listening right now, you know you wouldn't have even been doing any of this trade right now. You would have just, you could say you missed it or you just say, heck, you know, you're waiting. You, were, you had a plan. Your plan was to wait for the second tier to hit. If you recall, the second tier was, uh, you know, a few more dollars higher. But here's a first tier setup, the point. First tier setup, your first entry was 50 cents off pre-market. It kept running against you, so your second entry would have been $1 past, 193.03, right at the top up there. 194.13 it hit. You would have entered at 194.03. Keep in mind, this is IBM. It actually doesn't move near as fast as my LinkedIn and Tesla stocks, for instance. Uh, even though this looks like a sharp straight up for many of you that don't that are not uh, that are new to the system, particularly stocks that are this highly priced, you're probably going, "Wow, that's crazy! A two dollar move in just a few minutes. This is nothing, folks. Uh, LinkedIn can move twelve dollars in one minute." Uh, but that would have meant that my system, I'm waiting for it to move twelve dollars before I enter. And anywho, you had two hundred shares at the top, and because you entered a swing, you're going to draw back the 200 shares for a $2 profit, hence making $400 profit. And again, all of my integers are in 100 shares. That's the base. Once you get better, more experience, you could go 200 shares on every level. 300, 400, 500. It all depends on your skill. It all depends, of course, on how much capital you have. I just have to point that out. So, in other words, just because I'm going, suppose I go 1,500 shares on every level, which is insane to most people, but that doesn't mean you should be. And just because I enter a first tier doesn't mean you should be. Again, a lot of my uh, graduates and trainees in my program right now, they know that they shouldn't even have considered this trade because it was a first tier. Even though it was a perfect pullback. How did I know it was going to pull back? I had no clue, folks. I just knew that if it didn't, I would have grabbed the second tier the third tier, and so on. But it happened to be a perfect pullback. And, you know, and typically a first tier does pull back just like this. It either runs against you or pulls back clockwork like this. Uh, but, again, they're the most risky, so you don't necessarily enter on first tiers. That, that, that's the part that takes the longest time, and I'm only reemphasizing it ad nauseum in this webinar, just to, just to support the fact that you can't possibly trade this system unless you know every facet of it. But just to show that these are real levels is what I want to point out right now. Real levels, not back testing, reverse engineering the day. We knew that that 193.03 level has been there for days now. We've been waiting for it. We know that my system trades off of pre-market high. Not only that, I haven't even mentioned yet, if you want to see a real coincidence, what was previous day high? We know that previous day high from my last webinar and everyone in my graduates, 
that is a very strong level. Guess what? This is this is definitely a coincidence, but yesterday's high happened to be 193.53. My system means 50 cents past that. What is that? 194.03. And it happens to be exactly on the same penny. The intraday entry of 50 cents past with the swing level of a dollar past the daily level. They both are 194.03. One more reason why this was such a sharp pullback. That's an algorithm built into systems, I promise you, and that's why it's, it's so sharp of a pullback. You had all the stars aligned on this one, uh, and that's one way of looking at it. But again, that does not mean you go and just trade the previous day high, pre-market high, and hit a daily level, and everything will work out for you. Uh, if that's how you're trading this system or any system, I guarantee you're not making any money. So, that is IBM. That was today. Now, let me just recap it for you from the swing room. Give me two seconds here. And let's see. Just so you see down here first, uh, you'll note it's in gray off to the right here. Uh, the 193, first tier, in and out. I also wrote intraday too. I always put notes in here. You probably can't see it unless I scroll down. You scroll down, there's some general notes. I wrote this this morning for subscribers to my room. IBM first tier setup today, 827, is a great example of how intraday and swing trading come together for a precision pullback and more profit. Again, more profit simply because you're able to capture 200 shares on a one tier swing. Because normally you would just have 100 shares, that's the point. But intraday allowed you to come in with 200 shares. And then you still pull it back for $2 profit on 200 shares, not 15 cents. Hopefully that makes sense. Now, what I want to do is scroll up here and show you, basically it just recaps everything we just did. Give me a second, I'm a little trouble with the scroll. Here we go. The IBM trade, again, it's grayed out, says out today, 828. The first entry, 932, 100. The price, 193.6. Because the daily level, you know, I, it's only the swing room, the daily level meant the pre-market high. Remember, it was 193.10. It's 50 cents past it. That's where that came from. That's why I highlight and say yes for pre-market. Uh, again, this is one example of if you don't know how to use the trading room, you'll have no clue what all these numbers mean. Uh, great example right here. Even myself, sometimes I, I, I get a little confused, especially when it's a busy day, and all seven of my stocks are hitting swings. Uh, numbers become... Uh, uh, little convoluted. So I got to be on point with this system. It's definitely a real system with real price levels. Uh, the second, notice the second entry, that was the 193.03 went $1 pass. That's why you have a highlighted 194.03. Took the average, 193.82. Exited $2 lower than that at 191.82 at 1240. Just to show that all on the chart here, that meant that I got in here and at the top, wrote it all the way down, for a $2 profit, it almost hit right here too, mind you, by a couple pennies at 10.30. Then just went sideways and finally came down and hit the profit out here at 12.42. And that's why the swing room says 12, sorry, 12.40, sorry, 12.40. That was your exit when it finally hit the 191.82. So that was the IBM trade. Now, for time's sake, I'm going to fast forward to Ralph Lauren, and then, of course, I'll take questions. Uh, and again, I apologize, my first time doing the swing framework, mind you, uh, just ad hoc here, and I'm using today real world examples, uh, that's why it's easy for me, uh, this is the real deal, real uh, numbers here, but it's just a matter of what I show you and how I can get the point across in a short period of time. Let's uh, go to Ralph Run. just let me point out real quick, Ralph Run is yellow, it says I'm in now. It says that I have a first tier and second tier, 169.41. And you'll note, if I'm in two tiers here, that should mean over here, the third tier is next, 177, and that says outside 5%. I know that's a lot of information, but that's the point. The point is, I'm in two, and if it keeps going against me, I still always know what to do next. That's the key. Always have a plan. And in many cases, a lot of my traders aren't even in this because it's a two-tier and they're waiting for the third tier to hit, for instance. So it just depends on so many factors whether you're in this or not. 
That is the key to this system, is knowing when to enter, when not to enter, how many shares to enter at, and how many shares not to enter with. You know, there's so many facets to this. Let's go up to, uh, there's two ways, again, I can show you, but let me just scroll up so it's here. Again, Ralph Lauren, here's the actual uh, information. The first entry, mind you, was almost nine days ago. So, and this is a good example of how, in many cases, your first year, you're going to have to hold it for as much as a couple weeks, some cases four weeks. Uh, typically, it's not longer than that. Certainly, never in earnings, so the maximum will be three-month hold, uh, which almost never, ever happens. And again, this is a first year. And that's one of the risks with first year, mind you, is that it can go sideways, and that's why you need to have uh, you have to be highly capitalized to do a first tier trade, or else your money will be tied up for months. Uh, just to give you an example, that's just one reason why not. Uh, the second tier, it's all labeled here four days later on 822, even the last one is still five days ago, last week. Either way, we got an average here of 168.20. Just remember the average for now. And, that, and again, we're shorting, so we need it to come down to 166.20, $2 profit. We want a $2 profit. On everything, two dollars on two hundred would be a four hundred dollar profit. And again, it's all it's all relative, but it all it's all uh, integers of a hundred. So if you're highly capitalized, you would, this would be five hundred, five hundred, then you'd have a thousand share position, or two hundred, two hundred, and four hundred, and so on. The third tier is outside five percent. Let me go back to that just as a reminder, and that's under daily. And just as a reminder, let me scroll up. So we're at, remember, this is Ralph Lauren, so we know where we are. I know I'm opening up so many pages here. Normally I have this spread out across all of my screens. Ralph Lauren, left column, you have to scroll down, because it's a little lower here, 165, 169. Remember, within 5%, 177 is the third level. It's outside of 5%, so you only have two tiers to trade. Do you enter off the first or the second? If you enter up the second, you would have already profited by now, I believe. Matter of fact, we'll check that. Anywho, it hasn't profited yet because it hasn't come down to $2. Let's verify that. But again, just to remind you constantly is that our average is 168.20 on this trade. We need it to come down to 166.20. Has it hit 166.20? Let's go see what happened with Ralph Lauren today, anyways. Chances are we're going to be holding this. I know Ralph Lauren, mind you, is one of my more notorious stocks for being sluggish and sideways. Today is a, I mean, look at this chart. This is a classic example. Of, it's kind of going sideways, coincidentally, right at my average. You know, it's, and you'll see this happen over and over again with this system. The, 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 these numbers are real. Wall Street definitely is acknowledging them. That's the best way I can word it for you. It's not that they're golden numbers and they reverse on the button. Not at all. You just have to know what to do with the numbers and when and how many shares. And there's so many factors that come in. But most, all you need to know is once you have these numbers, they are important. Anywho, it's going sideways here. So we're definitely going to, we're holding overnight whether we like it or not here again. And that's fine. But tomorrow, if it comes down to 167, we're most likely we're out of it. If it heads up, well, then our option is to trade the third tier. And I have a lot of uh, trainees or beginners, I say, on the sidelines that are waiting for that third tier to hit. They're actually hoping this thing takes off. Of course, it goes against me, but it hits 177. Yeah, I am still holding it to 177, but I will come in with double the shares. Meaning if I have, just again, a pure example, if I have 100 and 100 on the first two, and it hits outside 5%, I'll come in with 200 on that. If that happens, very seldomly it does, and if it does, that just means I'm coming in with 200. It's, basically, it's essentially a second trade. That's one way you can look at it. Anywho, this is uh, most likely going to come down, and you can note all these levels. Uh, I, may, I just don't know when. You never know. The point is I have my plan. Whether it goes up, then I'm gonna, I know what to do. If it goes down, well, of course, I'm out with a profit. Either way, I have a plan. So that is pretty much it as far as examples go. Of course, I could sit here for hours and show you every other example that's in the room. But I figured I, I would give you a little mixed bag here of what I'm currently in, how I got to it. That's the Ralph Lauren, and we're still in it. You guys can watch it over the next couple days. Hopefully, it shoots down a couple dollars tomorrow, and I'm out with a nice profit. Uh, the IBM in and out, that was a good example of not only one day in and out, not only an example of just a single tier, first tier, it was also a perfect example, again, of how I traded uh, for intraday levels off of pre-market 
accumulated twice the shares with intraday and swing, making a perfect fusion of the two. So we have about five minutes left. I feel like I went a little over because I don't mind going longer. That's up uh, up to Rob and you guys, but I, I'm here to answer questions at this point, and I've got all my charts up. So if you're still there, Rob, and you want to tune in, uh, let's get a, let's get going with the question and answer portion of the webinar. Sounds good. Yep, I'm still here. So yeah, everyone, just feel free to type in questions, and we'll definitely get to them all. We got no questions that are already typed in, Rob? Uh, no, actually, we don't. No, that's fine. Yeah, if any, and, and again, this is uh, obviously if anyone has questions, uh, whether they have them now, obviously, go to my website, contact me. And as my website, I'll tell you, I don't mind spending time on the phone. If you're a serious trader, explain it, you know, answering valid questions, particularly after you saw a webinar. Uh, I, it's anyone coming to me completely blind, knowing nothing about my system. It's really a waste of both our time. So, but after watching this, uh, you must certainly have questions. I even myself, I'm going through my mind right now, and how many questions I'd be asking uh, before I uh, came privy to this whole methodology. And while we're waiting, Rob, to uh, if you want to explain to me as well as the crowd. Uh, when will this be available, of course, on your website, but also on my own, because I would love to have it to where I have my intraday, and this one obviously is all swing. Sure. Um, it should be available, uh, I would say, probably by Tuesday of next week. Of course, after the long Labor Day weekend. Yeah, I don't know if our full <laughs> staff would be here uh, tomorrow or Friday so to get this approved and up there. So I would say Tuesday would be a better time to look for it and it should be available for everyone. All right, well, yeah, if there's no questions immediately right now, that's uh, that's fine. Uh, it's up to you on how you want to proceed from here, Rob. Uh, we can just hang around for another minute or two, and if not, we certainly, any questions that come in to us, we'll, we'll direct them over to you. All right, no problem. Do you have any questions, Rob? <laughs> um, I was just wondering really about I know you have all your price levels, but when do you actually d decide it's time that maybe it's not going in, in your direction any longer? What's your yeah? Well, exit well in, other word, in other words, yeah. What's the exit strategy? Everyone uh, likes to obviously call it stop loss. Uh, I like to call it strategy exit, meaning I have several strategies on when to exit. Uh, the key two biggest strategies for first and foremost. When I know it sounds a cliche, but when you realize you screwed up, then that's because my system is so transparent. You can go back and back test it, and most for the most part, you you will find that you like for instance you entered on a first tier when you should have entered on a second, and then you realize you messed up. That's exactly when you say get the heck. Of course you stop loss. You mm -hmm. screwed up. Get out. And, and of course, and of course, I train. That's one of the biggest training factors mm -hmm. in my program. Uh, the biggest of all, which is the easiest is you simply stop loss on the day of earnings. I mean, and, and, but I have strategies to where you never even enter to begin with, say, within five days of earnings. That way you don't get stuck in a sideways pattern that's running against you because you cannot hold in the earnings. If you hold in, the, especially on my stocks like Tesla and LinkedIn, they can run $30 against you. Sure. Uh, but, yeah, they're more strategy. It's not uh, like, like with my tier system, I mean, there's never a time you don't have a plan. Therefore, there's never a time you say, oh, I don't know what to do, so I should just exit. And, but that's the point. If you don't know what you're doing, then, of course, you exit. But you're always going to have these levels because they're on the charts. And they're not my levels. These are levels that have formed on the chart and over and over again, especially when you really know my system and back test it, you'll see how they constantly pivot off these levels. They just don't necessarily pivot off the first tier. First tier can run ten dollars against you. So with a hundred share block trade, you're a thousand dollars in a red. That's normal though, depending on your plan. Mm -hmm. it's not, you know, just so there's never a time you just say, you know what, i you know, it's running against me. I'm totally screwed. Let me just exit and take the loss. That that never happens. It, you have to have a plan. You certainly take losses, and then I have ways to recoup that. For instance, if you stop loss before earnings, 
and you had to take a loss, well, then you come in more aggressively the day after earnings. And I have a whole strategy just on how to trade the day after earnings. Obviously, if it runs $40 gap, you know, you might want to come in with another 100 Just This is an example on a short position. It just depends on a lot of factors. But it certainly doesn't mean you don't take advantage of your loss itself. Makes sense. So that's why I call it strategy stop loss. I mean, if, if you just take a nominal value on, you know, there's a lot of systems out there say when you're down 2%, just exit. Don't take the loss after that. If you're doing that constantly, you're most likely going to lose in the long run. That's the point. Because most trades are going to run 2%, even 5% against you. If you're constantly stop loss, and you're never going to make money. Mm -hmm. Especially with how you do your tiers, they are always going to go in the in the other direction before they reverse. Exactly, and that and that's why you need to know which tier to enter at, and how much and and how much capital you are to how much capital you have to absorb that run against you. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's just basic one on one, you know, uh, tier trading basically. And in essence, except with mine, it's reverse. So we're not guessing how far a trend will continue. We're waiting until that trend exhausts itself. In other words, whenever stocks hit their all-time highs, I'm coming in heavy. And I can promise you, every stock in my trading room, when they hit all-time highs and then, then run against you, they always do a little bit. They always, every one of them, I pull back. They always do. And then now, when I say they always do, the levels that hold for 10 days, these strong levels. And a lot of traders misconstrue that. And just as soon as it hits the all-time high, they jump in, for instance. And then it runs 20 more dollars against them, and they wonder where they went wrong. Mm -hmm. You know, it's all about that 10-day hold. It has to prove that Wall Street decided that was a high. In 10 days, that's two long trading weeks of Wall Street trading that stock that determines that that is a strong level. And then, of course, there's a lot more to it than that. You'll have several levels, for instance, that are within $1. I eliminate all of them and take the highest. You know, that's another one of the little things, caveats I can show in the webinar. But, yeah, I'll... Uh, that was a long-winded uh, answer to your question, Bob. I just wanted to put <laughs> no, all that out there. A lot of information. Uh, it's great. Yeah, well, that's, a, that's the thing. I, I can't. I either give too much, but then even too much then makes people want to go out and take that and trade it. But, again, I'll leave on this note. Absolutely, if you haven't been trained by me formally on the system, do not try to take little pieces of it, use it as a hybrid system on what you already are doing, and think it will work. And I believe you me, it will not. I promise you it will not. Because it just, it's a whole system in its entirety. There's so many procedures involved. There's a lot of procedure based with the prices, what to do with them. I have all these golden rules, for instance, I didn't even touch upon. Certain levels, certain things that happen at certain times, you don't do this, you do this. You know, and that, there's, that's where it takes a lot of work and effort to put into the system. Absolutely. So, uh, yeah, absolutely. Just uh, anyone who has access to my trade room and they have those numbers there but don't know what to do with them, they're going to lose a lot of money if you don't know what to do with them. Well, we so, and that goes with any system. That's like you're walking in a Goldman Sachs trading floor on Wall Street and looking over a guy's shoulder and seeing he just bought at the 200 level. Does that mean you should be buying? <laughs> You know, that doesn't mean, you know, he could have a whole separate strategy and no clue what he's doing. Of course. Well, so, we anyways, yep, go ahead. Well, we definitely should schedule you for another follow-up webinar here um, as soon as we can just to uh, reinforce everything and maybe even, you know, you could get those golden rules up as well, and we can... Uh, uh, well, well, that's, well, that's the problem. The more I give of my system bits and pieces of it, the, it's always going to miss the glue. Mm -hmm. And I'm the glue, you know, and it's all about that practicing. And, and that's something I ran into over the years of doing my seminars. I give out too much, but it's always too little, mm -hmm. you know. And then someone goes, there's always that one guy who's going to go and try whatever he learned. He's going to lose... And he's going to go and post somewhere that day trader Josh's system doesn't work, <laughs> even though he hasn't learned it. You know, believe me, there's people out there that do that. Of course. Uh, but, yeah, just in the golden rules, I can't just throw them out there, list them, and it takes – there's a lot of uh, feedback I need. For instance, I need you to trade for a whole week using the golden rules. We go over your trades, I, and I'll find all the – you're, you're going to make a lot of mistakes, and I need to constantly keep building on your mistakes. I can't just say, do this, this, and this, and you do everything right. It's impossible. No one can take this system by words and on paper and then make it work. It's impossible. There's a lot of real-world procedures, back and forth, trial and error that we have to go over and over. And a lot of it's hand and eye coordination, as you know, with your, you know, your top-notch fast key, for instance. That's something I only cover on my intraday. Fast key is one of the biggest mistakes with intraday. 
you don't get your order out there quick enough, you're going to miss your 15 cent profit. Mm -hmm. You know, and I don't care how good you are at my system. People still screw up simply because they hit F1 when they meant to hit F5, for instance. You know, and then they hold it all day because they're attached to it, and then they lose $500 when they know they shouldn't have. And there's an example of stop loss. Sure. So, yeah, we can yeah, definitely I love these webinars with you guys. I'm glad we could get this out for swing trading and uh, hopefully get it up on my website as well as yours. That way, uh, so I get a lot of people asking me about my swing trading. Of course, that's part of my program, yet I don't have a webinar on it. Now yeah. I do. So, that works out great. It's been a pleasure. There's no questions. Uh, definitely hit my website, contact me, and we can go from there. I don't mind answering questions one-on-one uh, -on -one with uh, you guys. Uh, so, future reference, uh, go to my website for any other information. Great. Thank you so much. Um, I'm sure everyone uh, learned a lot here, and we'll definitely let you know when that is up and stored on the website for everyone to take a look. All right. It's been a pleasure, Rob. I don't talk to you again. You have a wonderful Labor Day weekend, and that goes for everyone else. Thank you. Same to you. Okay. Thanks, everybody, right. and uh, we'll be in touch.